I am a serious super fan of our next speaker. Alex Didleris is an acclaimed screenwriter and playwright who won the 2015 Academy Award for Best Original Screenplay. Thank you, Chris. As a child out of family circumstance, I was raised by my Armenian grandmother, Vartui, Grandma Rose. She raised me on Armenian food, on Armenian music, on Armenian love. And I have never known another love that compares to it. <laughs> Winning an Academy Award was a dream come true for me. But it was a dream afforded to me only by the unfathomable journey that my grandmother took. When she died in 1989, I felt separated from my Armenian roots. And yet, 26 years later, I am here in the middle of this magnificent gathering, and I am home. Welcome home! Before my first daughter, Amalia Rose, was born, I wrote a play called Red Dog Howls that revolved around the genocide. It was my tribute to my grandmother and to all the survivors and victims of the genocide. And today, if you'll tolerate me, I will read a piece from the play. In the scene, Michael Kiriakos, who thinks he's Greek, discovers a grandmother he thought was long dead. And in doing so, he discovers that he's Armenian. He says, I knew this place, I knew this woman, I'd never been here nor met her, but in the bottom of my soul, I knew a part of me had always lived in this apartment. She warmed the soup for me and I devoured it, bowl after bowl, as if I hadn't eaten for days. It was simple enough, rice pilaf, dill, celery, onion, a hint of lemon, but so delicious, so, I don't, nourishing. Warming me from the inside in a way that would be impossible to explain and all the while I ate she sat watching silently in her chair across the room Measuring me as if I were a ghost and she couldn't work out whether I was actually there or not The red dogs of the desert all howled one night after hopelessly moaning over the sands for some unknown incomprehensible grief for the next six months, I went almost every day and visited with Rose. The routine was always the same. I would bring some bread or wine or flowers. She would have lunch already prepared, chicken with rice pilaf, lamajun, which was like a flat, round tortilla with minced lamb and peppers and tomato. There were two different dishes she called dolma, one I was familiar with, grape leaves stuffed with rice, but there was another kind of dolma, which was basically cabbage stuffed with beef and baked and I never understood why they had the same name and I never bothered to ask because they were so delicious. There was always the soup, always with lemon, always chudeg, which is sweet Armenian bread, and always dessert, lokma, fried dough rolled in brown sugar. And though she cooked enough for ten, she would never eat. I mean, occasionally she would pick at some rice or eat one of the, the dolma, the, the, the grape leaf kind with some crackers, but never a lot and never the meat, not beef, not chicken, never. One day I asked her whether she was a vegetarian and she snapped back at me, I am an Afratian. The joke of course being that basically all names in Armenian end in I-A-N and Y-A-N. Now, I can't be sure, but by her reaction, I still think she may have known a family in the old country named Vegetarian and not liked them very much. <laughs> It wasn't long before I became obsessed with the Armenian culture. It was in my blood. It offered me a past, a history that I had never known, and it nourished me. Like the food, I knew it could make me something that I suddenly realized I never was before. Strong. By now I had learned a lot about the shadow of my past, an ancient culture, Armenia, who for a short time had been even more powerful than Rome. Mount Ararat, purported to be the resting place of Noah's Ark, was the center of its geographical and cultural soul, the first nation to accept Christianity as its national religion. Armenians, for the most part, were educated and hardworking. They were doctors and lawyers, poets and musicians, traders, farmers, and writers. 
They were my ancestors. And the more I learned about them, the more I felt, how can I... whole. It was one morning in October 1986 that I opened my first book addressing the Armenian Genocide, the Ottoman Turks, and the waning days of the Empire were attempting to systematically exterminate the entire Armenian race, and in 1915 they had all but succeeded. They had starved, beaten, tortured, and killed as many as one and a half million souls. And while I was horrified at the personal stories and witness accounts I was reading, I was also mesmerized. Page after page of the most gruesome images you could imagine. Grainy black and white photos of people who, if they weren't walking skeletons, would look very much like me. An orphan swan is suffering in my soul. And there, over newly buried bodies, it rains blood. It pours from mine eyes. And the red dogs of the desert all howled one night after hopelessly moaning over the sands for some unknown, incomprehensible grief. I will never forget my grandmother Rose. We will never forget our ancestors and the impossible journeys they made. We will never forget.